And we will continue when we have stopped. Our sponsor is Four Seasons Hotel. And the session name is The Future of Turkey. And we will be discussing what is essential for the future of Turkey and for the global economical balances where, and the future plans of locomotive sector players in Turkey. We will be hosting CEO of BNP Paribas Card of Turkey, Cemal Kishmir, as the moderator of the session. Let me introduce you our panel speakers. Turkish Republic Under Secretary of Turkish Trade Rio Osman Çelik, Migros CEO Özgür Tort, Doğan Holding Chairman of the Chairwoman of the Board Begüm Han Doğan Faralyalı, Nimak Holding Chairman of the Board Dihat Özdemir, Alarco Holding. Chairman of the board is it Gari? Tiger Group Chairman of the board Mesut Toprak. Have a nice session. Distinguished participants, first of all, I would like to say welcome to each and all of you. Captain Economist magazines have started this journey seven years ago. We have started this event seven years ago, and this is a very important reference point in the business life, and it is bringing the Calibre one level up every year with your contributions and participations and with the contribution of our speakers we are hosting a very important event we will be speaking about the future of turkey as our uh, deputy prime minister is open us a gate we will be discussing the further pictures of this Horizon. Uh, maybe you know our speakers very well, but I would like to introduce you, starting from the left side, our Under Secretary of Turkish Treasury, Osman Çelik. Welcome, Özgür Bey, CEO of Migros. Welcome, Bigiman Hanım, Don Holding, Chairwoman of the Board, Izet Kari, Alarco Holding, Chairman, and Mesut Bey, Tire Group Chairman. Welcome. And Nihat Bey is the Limak Holding Chairman. Welcome. Our topic is the future of Turkey. When we speak about the future of Turkey in different fields, in different industries, we will be speaking about. And uh, let me approach this future topic as follows. Where are we going to proceed? There's so much about to know where we are going through. This is something which I give a great importance. In Alice in Wonderland, there is a very important statement. Alice and Rabbit are running together and after a while the rabbit stops and Alice says to the Rabbit, oh we are exhausted, let's wait for a while and they are coming to a division in the road and which way you would like to go. But the, where you are going is not important but where you would like to reach is important. Actually, when we are designing feature, we need to know where to go at the junction point. Up until now, the performance of Turkey and the moment we have come so far uh, is also a commitment for the feature, but of course this is not a guarantee. Uh, on the global means and also geopolitical means, actually in the short term and the middle term, we are facing with some certain risks. Technology and the importance of technology is defining our business models and we are really defining our business models. After this brief introduction, I'm going to pass the floor to our panel speakers. Begum Hananam, I would like to start with you. We are speaking about a feature, but I'm going to bring you a more daily topic in this week, your group for 
in the media business, you were a very important figure in the big picture, but now you are outside that big picture with a 40 year of experience. So where are you going to be involved? In which picture you will be present? Where are we going to see Dawn Holding and where you are going to continue to construct the future of Turkey? Thank you. I'm very glad you have asked. I believe that a fat, when a fat speaker gets on the stage, people are always thinking, how fat is that person? Until he states that I'm a very fat person, uh, everybody is looking and gazing and thinking he's a fat boy. Of course, Don Media has been uh, out of the picture now, the big picture of the media. Uh, next year, we will be celebrating the 60th year of Don Group. Our group has expanded with Turkey and uh, developed with Turkey in different business areas. We have been involved in banking and insurance, tourism and retail uh, businesses. We were always being involved in different areas. And media was an important leg. I was three year old when we were first in the media. I'm not going to tell my age right now. I, uh, I'm looking younger. But a 40 year uh, of experience was the experience that we do have in hand as a group, as the workers, as the family. We always uh, have had the recognition of this responsibility and we have tried to serve the international standards. Of course, the national law was above of everything. We have brought many pioneering activities. When you look at this industry, it is passing through very difficult times. We have given the right decision at the right time and are very happy. We are in love with Turkey. We believe in Turkey. We will be speaking about the future of Turkey more. We will be looking in different fields and we will continue to grow up. Let me continue about the future of Turkey. Then we look Within 25, 30 years, there is a huge development all around the world. And there are two things which uh, we can mention. The development of technology, it is rapidly changing. Artificial intelligence, robotic technologies are really affecting our life a lot. In 2030, the labor force of the present time, I mean 15% of the present time labor force will not be present. It, has got, it is bringing some threats and opportunities. And economy and the commercial uh, balance will be changing. China and India is keeping one out of 3% of the whole picture. And the total production of the world capacity is being placed uh, in the hands of the Japan and China and also railway system is aiming to combine Asia and Europe. The power that is being kept in, in the hand of Russia is trying to be transformed into an advantage uh, by, the, by making use of the railways. And one trillion dollar is on the line of Baku, Cars, Tiflis route and this will be bringing very good and beneficial contributions to Turkey. We do have a young population, young generation and we do have a lot of opportunities in front. To make use of these opportunities efficiently we do have five topics to develop ourselves. The first one is constructive reforms. And in the, in the morning, the minister has just mentioned this, structural reforms are essential, as you all know this. Without having the freedoms and also legal reforms, it is not possible to speak about development. The Ramajan type of economics states that very well, and we need to take a very long way. And besides that, I say that we are getting into the match with half of our players. So the v woman labor force needs to be higher. When we look at the OECD countries and the inclusion of women, Turkey is the lowest country. And Mackenzie has got a very good study. states that uh, the labor women labor force, if we bring it to the level of OECD level, the GDP 
will be increasing 20% just by including the women power inside the labor force. We will be increasing our GDP 20%. This is a striking fact and we do have a huge opportunity awaiting us. And when we look, the inclusion of women in the labor force, I, as you know it, United Nations to have 20 30 objectives. And what type of contributions uh, we can bring? Paul Paul Mun, uh, has, is chairing a committee. And in this working committee, we have defined that in order to reach the objectives of uh, UN, what type of efficacies are essential? What type of leaders may bring the world a better place? And there are six efficacies, thinking long-term, innovativeness and cooperation, transparency and, and being uh, eco-friendly and social inclusion. According to the researchers, it is pointing out that when you create equal places for women, those efficacy items are being more present. As the one group, on the administrative level, we are 34%. I have placed the uh, objective ratio as 50%. We are going in that way, and Turkey really needs to take some further steps in to bring an equal ground for the women labor force. And, of course, the most important figure is about the last 12 years. In the last 12 years, Turkey has spent more than 14% of an investment in the field of education. When you look at the performance, the outcome is not responding to this investment. In schooling, we are very good. In many topics, we are very good. 20% of an investment is being done. However, we could not transform it into performance. When we look at the PISA results, Turkey is in the fifth place. 40% is about the mathematical skills, which is weak, and 50% of, uh, 50 of the students are weak in the field of science. If you would like to go up in the league, we need to work very hard, and technology is an opportunity and also a threat. According to the two-week results, we are in the level of 67% in the Internet usage. In the business world, Internet usage is very high. When you look at the Facebook results, they are actively involved in the use of Internet, but we are not transformed into productivity. We are not using it efficiently, and we are really low in the level of productivity. We are a very working country, community, I look at OECD countries, we do have an overtime uh, working hour. 25 25% of the workers are working overtime. We are working very hard, but we are not able to get productivity. This is so much related with the lack of technology and education. In order to Jump to the front. We have spoken about Industry 4.0. Now there is Community 5.0. This is a new concept. Ro robotic technologies, artificial intelligences are being spoken out. And the uh, human beings and human values needs to be uh, needs to be taken into consideration. We will be speaking more. Needs to be protected for a long of period, we have told that data is very important, we need to be an information society. Now it's time to own your wisdom, it is time to protect the values. So this has become very crucial. I believe that, though if you give importance to the topics which I have mentioned, we will be having more opportunities and we will be involved in the first 10 economies. You have asked us what we are going to do as Doan Group. When we look at our history, the best uh, action that we have taken is seeing the right opportunities at the right time and uh, taking actions at the right time. So if we find the right procurement time and right procurement methods, we will be applying them in the fields that we see as an opportunity. Thank you. I would like to turn to you. 
we will be passing through the way of Deputy Prime Ministers and we do have some objectives and the economy needs to be sustainable and stabilized and without spending to tomorrow's resources we need to define and serve the needs of today. So on the Treasury side, where do you see the macro opportunities? Where do you see the roadmap? Thank you very much. Well, as you all know, starting from 2000, the Turkish economy has started to initiate many reforms, and with those reforms we advanced remarkably. Starting with the global financial crisis, we actually took many precautions for the internal and external shocks, and we, act we actually proved the resistance of our economy. Our economy is now much more innovative, uh, and we have to actually embrace a more innovative and added value economy. As we do this, a sustainable, a strong economic platform should be established. <laughs> and in order to realize that, there are uh, certain uh, actually features that we take as a priority. First of all, we have to increase the internal savings. And the other one is the access to the finance. And the third important parameter is to support the entrepreneurship. If I will be elaborating on those topics, I can say those. We have a young population and we have to open new employment areas for the young population, but the internal savings are not enough. In the Asian developing markets, the savings ratios are approximately 40%, uh, but in Turkey it is uh, approximately 25%, which is not enough. In order to open new employment areas, we are in need of foreign investments, and without actually increasing our savings, it is not possible for us to have a sustainable development. And as the uh, under, uh, Secretary of the Turkish Treasury, as the Turkish Treasury, we have a couple of studies going on, and one of those studies, activities, are actually concerning your sector, insurance sector, and one of those uh, projects is uh, actually focusing on the individual pension scheme. And with the private pension scheme, we are hoping to uh, increase the savings, and the statistics have already been conveyed. Up until now, 7 million people have been involved in this private pension scheme with the governmental support. Uh, the total volume has reached out to $80 billion. Uh, and I can also say that we are uh, we actually hosted new 3 million users of the private pension scheme and in order to tackle our gaps and bottlenecks we are also working on the legislative changes and they are right now waiting at the parliament and I do believe that this private pension scheme and the individual pension scheme will increase our savings. In order to develop the insurance sector we also actually open the uh, door and the uh, pathway uh, of this insurance, collaborative ins insurance uh, sector. And at the same time, we are actually opening a new pathway for our citizens to save even more. And we attach significant importance to the increase at the amount of the savings. In addition to that, the resources of the Treasury should be uh, made use of effectively. We initiated this single Treasury budget system, which has been ratified by the Parliament recently. The basics of uh, this is actually as follows. The public uh, finance will be done by the uh, Treasury, but also the resources uh, of the private uh, companies can be uh, used because many of them are idle. With this single uh, Treasury uh, system, we will be collecting all the assets and the liabilities of the Treasury on their single platform so that we will be increasing the resources and the tools of the Treasury and uh, as a result of that the costs of borrowing will be reduced. These are our targets. In addition to all of those, we are actually increasing the uh, uh, variety of the uh, borrowings. 
Last year, for the first time, we have actually uh, started to initiate uh, this gold bill of exchange. And in addition to that, uh, there is actually no example of lease certificate based on uh, gold. Although there are different calculations, 202,000 tons of gold are actually kept in households. And uh, with a numerical value, it means that $120 billion. Of course, uh, technically, it is not feasible to translate uh, uh, this lease certificate based on gold uh, all of a sudden. But with such kind of activities we, and such kind of studies, I believe we will be actually making use of those resources which are already idle into our uh, economy. This lease certificate uh, implementation is going on not only inside of the Turkey because we are also exporting lease certificates to the foreign markets. Those products of the Treasury is also showing an indicator in the markets because as the Treasury is involved in the uh, market, the banks and also the private companies are uh, involved and as a result they have a chance to access to those uh, products. With regards to the variety of the borrowing instruments, I can say that uh, we actually borrowed uh, fr uh, from the Japanese market and this year we will borrow uh, with yuan from the Chinese market and uh, the main reason for such kind of uh, differentiation in our borrowings is of course to increase uh, the uh, different types of uh, borrowing in uh, our public sector. Of course, we try to increase our savings and uh, we are also trying to underline the important role of the public sector to finance those projects. We should also ease access to the finance. Last year, uh, I believe, uh, I'm sure that this uh, topic will be uh, spoken uh, tomorrow in detail, but Credit Guarantee Fund uh, is quite important project because Credit Guarantee Fund was operational for 25 years, but nobody knew about it uh, until last year. And we changed the structure uh, of this Credit Guarantee uh, Fund and we integrated our uh, banking se sector with the Credit Guarantee Fund and in a very short time uh, over 200 uh, billion uh, dollars of fund has been actually uh, presented to the use of many of the small and medium scaled enterprises. And uh, in another implementation uh, of us that we are actually uh, using in our sector in is the uh, indemnity insurance. And uh, through the indemnity insurance, uh, our companies can actually uh, make use of this financial tool and we actually open and uh, try to prevent the barriers uh, for indemnity insurance. And there is actually an uh, other uh, tool that we are currently working on, the credit insurance. The credit insurance is not developed in uh, Turkey. Big companies are using the credit insurance, but on the SME level, uh, credit insurance is not well known and we are in need of new regulations. And if we can develop this, whenever there is a fluctuation in the market and when the trust is hampered in the market, the, this credit insurance can actually reinforce the trust uh, to those uh, companies so that the SMEs can focus on manufacturing and sales rather than collecting uh, their uh, incomes. And they can also show their credit insurance as a guarantee so that they can use even further uh, loans from the banks. As you know, last year, uh, especially the hypothec of the movables has been legalized because some of our uh, companies were not able to uh, use their movables uh, actually as a mortgage and this also created an important uh, 
facilitation for such kind of companies to make use of uh, credits. And in order to disseminate the usage of the credit uh, guarantee funds, we actually announced a second package with the volume of $55 billion. Last year, we didn't have any actual limitation with regards to the usage of the credit guarantee funds, but this year, we actually use a positive discrimination for the investments and the export, and also to the employment. And we showed uh, positive discrimination to our exporters, and we are giving them 100% guarantee as long as they export. In the new term, we will be supporting startup companies and open new platforms for the angel investors, and the necessary regulations and the legislation has already been established with regards to that, and we hope that our companies will be uh, actually involved in this uh, process, and hopefully they will support our angel investors. As Treasury, we can actually transfer funds to the uh, higher funds, but if you have uh, actually any concrete recommendation, we can also uh, support you, and we will continue to support our uh, new investors. Thank you very much. I would like to continue with Mr. Nihat. As Limak Holding, you are operational in many different sectors like infrastructure, energy, tourism, aviation and food sector. But there is one uh, topic that uh, actually you are taking your popularity and especially this uh, airport uh, project with the 4.5 uh, billion dollars of volume. If I'm not mistaken, this is the uh, actually the most expensive uh, project in Turkey. So as a businessman who can actually implement such kind of projects, uh, what do you think your company will reach uh, out in Turkey? So if uh, I can ask you what will be the dream of uh, Turkey as if the dream of uh, Fenerbahce being champion, what can you say? Of course. Each year, uh, as Fenerbahce, we really would like to become champion, but it's not very easy. First of all, thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to speak. How do we see Turkey? Deputy Prime Minister actually made a very good presentation, and we were able to see everything. And we also saw that the global economy is uh, actually quite bright, and the economy is going on well uh, on the global scale. And if we can take certain precautions and adapt ourselves to this uh, trend, I can also say that the uh, future of the Turkey is quite bright. The interest rates are quite low. There are certain countries with the minus interest rates. And once again, there is a growth in the European Union and also in the United States, and this is a good news for Turkey. And the global economy is growing, and the Turkish economy is growing. And I hope that this trend will be going on without any decrease. And the Deputy Prime Minister said that we should target inflation and we should be careful uh, about the interest rates, and we should open, uh, actually, the path uh, for the investors, and the Treasury, uh, Under Secretary of the Treasury actually explained uh, what we should do. Uh, everybody said that in 2016 the Turkish economy will shrink. In 2015 there was this uh, Treasury's military coup attempt. Although it was expected that the Turkish economy will be shrinking, Turkish economy actually grew. And we actually uh, had a growth rate of 5%, 6%, and even 7%. And in 2018, we also believe that the growth rate will be uh, uh, going on, and hopefully the inflation rate will be reduced to 5% or 6%, even 9% may not be enough. Can't we do that? I believe we can do that because we have a very good budget. In terms of the uh, budget policies, we are actually going on quite well. And each uh, three months, uh, we, the budget uh, statistics are being actually announced. Although we had many elections, the uh, discipline of the Turkish economy has not been lost. 
we will have two important uh, elections and without losing our discipline uh, if we can actually pass these two elections then I do believe that the future of the Turkey will be quite good I have to be optimist as an investor even if there is one drop of water inside of the uh, bottle that is actually what concerns us we are not concerned whether uh, when the uh, glass is empty we are currently working on our airport project uh, we actually started as a contractor to uh, actually construct uh, airports to the government to the state and uh, uh, BOT, build, operate and transfer method has been started to be used in Dalaman airport, in Ankara airport, Izmir Amenderes airport, in all of those airports the same model has been used and for the airport uh, operation I believe that Turkey is the most successful country and I can say this quite assertively that Turkey can use this BOT model most efficiently because we know the other countries, we know the situation of the other airports and we also see the, our airports and it is quite visible how successful we are. We started this business with Sabiha Gökçen Airport and in a record time, as we gave our promise to our Prime Minister, we opened Sabia uh, a, a Gökçen Airport and it was actually a very uh, good success story. And then we went to Kosovo, have, uh, actually empty land has been given to us. We find the, found the financing tool and we opened this airport and we operated very good. Cairo Airport was constructed by us and we actually materialized the dream of the Senegal uh, people and as two constructor company we went to Senegal and we will operate this airport for 25 years and they will see our flags anyone who goes to Kosovo and anyone who goes to Senegal will see the Turkish flag because we are operating these airports and thanks to us they will see our flags and hopefully uh, such kind of examples will be increasing in the future and as everybody knows it very well with BOT model Turkey can be an example to the world and the third airport uh, project has been tendered with this model BOT there were there was this German Turkish consortium uh, French uh, Turkish consortium and as five company we uh, gathered together and we thought that we can actually do this and we take, took a look to this uh, project rather than the substructure it was really important to be successful especially for the infrastructure because at that uh, place uh, there was this coal mine and everywhere was uh, actually useless it was an area which cannot be used uh, at all, 80 mil square, million square. So within a four year time, all those infrastructure problems have been tackled and we actually uh, constructed the biggest terminal with the three floor. There is not such a terminal under single uh, roof in the world, by the way. Hopefully, in 29th of October, we will uh, open this uh, airport and starting from 13th uh, of October, you will be flying from there. Many of those uh, actually uh, places uh, of the airport has been uh, completed and I can say that we actually constructed the most beautiful terminal, airport terminal in the world and when you were flying from there hopefully we will actually host you there and you will be able to take your uh, car from the parking slot very easily and we will also renew our operation uh, with regards to the taxi services we will have very good duty free shops all of the brands would like to be a part of this airport hopefully with a successful model we will open the third airport to the service of the Turkish people and when you fly from this airport you will remember that five Turkish companies came together and they actually completed this project if you can thank us uh, even silently it will be more than enough for us 
Kuwait airport was an important project and we didn't have any consortium in this project. As the Lima Holding, we actually bought uh, this, we actually won this uh, tender and it was a very uh, hard competition actually and our uh, president actually came to the uh, launch of the airport we, uh, it, it is not launched actually and we can say that 40% of the project had been completed and it is uh, architecturally uh, a very hard uh, project uh, the width of the columns are 135 meters so the width of a stadium is 90 meters so uh, I mean when you think about it without any column we are just trying to uh, uh, actually finish this project the project term was six years but we actually made our plan to finish it within four years and 3,000 people are currently working there and 1,000 uh, of uh, them are uh, actually brought there from Turkish. Hopefully within a couple of months the number of the people employed there will be reaching to 6,000 people. And at the same time one of the important projects of the Turkey and also one of the most important uh, indicators of uh, uh, success uh, for the Turkish economy. I would like to speak about it. 1915 Çanakkale Bridge. And this project has been tendered with the BOT model. Two Turkish company together with two Korean companies came, came together and actually established a consortium and we won the tender. And the most important issue here was that the project was about 3 billion euros. And at the same time, there was this 100 kilometers of uh, main road. The most important uh, part of this project was to solve uh, the finance financing. And we thought together with our Korean partners. Well, Kore Exim uh, is actually a very cost-effective fund and we thought that we have to make use of it. And I also would like to thank to our Under Secretary of Treasury and our Minister for their support. Because they said that it is actually a governmental project and they attach significant importance to that and they actually said this in every platform. And uh, actually in their official visits they uh, have spoken about those projects and Coregzim actually uh, supported us and we actually attracted many from China, from Kuwait, uh, even from Netherlands, from Europe uh, and the European banks. We were able to find financial resource and from the Islamic institutions we actually uh, f uh, found finance and 1.16 uh, billion euros have been collected. Why does this matter? Our uh, Under Secretary has already mentioned in all of our projects we shouldn't be using only the Turkish banks. We should also make use of the foreign financial institutions. That's what I believe. And all businessmen should believe in that. I really wished to see our foreign uh, partners to be a part of this BOT projects because if we were able to do that uh, this would be good for the Turkish uh, economy for the Çanakkale 1915 uh, bridge hopefully we will be uh, constructing the biggest bridge in the world and 70 percent of this project uh, finance has been collected from the foreign banks and on Sunday uh, our uh, minister, uh, prime minister and president actually uh, came to uh, the project uh, for, the uh, for the ground breaking and the first caisson uh, was uh, actually molded and hopefully 18th of March 2022, we will be opening our bridge. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Your exciting presentation.
I would like to turn to you, Izet Fayez Alarkoglu. You do have different business fields, tourism and infrastructure, and you're actively involved in three continents. Maybe you think about your diversity and the expansion of your company. Where do you place yourself? Where are you in the future of Turkey? My second question will be from the countryside. All of the foreign land activities that you're doing, how it will be contributing to the future of Turkey? Distinguished Under Secretary, distinguished moderator, and distinguished business world people, distinguished members of the press, you're all welcome. I would like to thank Capital and Economist magazine, Rov Atish and Talat Yeshidoglu for their contribution. First of all, I would like to uh, pray the best from God for the martyrs that we have lost in Zeytindal operation, in Olive Branch operation. We would like to express our commemorations. Well, we will be starting with the construction business. There's a World League, and in this World League, starting from now, we do have 2016 figures. We are the se we are taking the second place. So, in the engineering user record, which is the NR of this business, has got a total turnover. And this turnover is being allocated to 150 companies and approximately more than uh, $500 billion. And the Turkish national team is taking the second place. $25.5 billion is the amount that we own as a Turkish national team. Thanks to God, Alarco is one of these uh, team players. And we do have a lot of team players. I won't be able to count the names one by one. Nihat Bey is here. Ebru Özdemir, her daughter, is not here. She's one of the best um, civil engineers. Limak is one of the best players of this national team. Sani Şener, I really take a lot of uh, inspiration from him, him. And he's really mentoring me many times. He's one of the big players of this national team. I'm not complimenting to those people. I really do love Murat Bey. I see him from Tekfen. Uh, they're all very... Tekfen is a very good player. And there are a lot of names which I'm not able to see. We do have 33 more players, which are the uh, national players, national team players. I will be going through the global picture, and I will be coming back to our national picture. So I will look at the world globally, and we look at Middle East. The 21% uh, of the guarantee market is being owned by the Korean people, and we will South Korea 21, China 17, and Turkey 8. And we look at Africa. In Africa, the Chinese people are very strong, and they have prepared the strategies years ago. And 55% of the market is being owned by them. Italians are having the 10%. We are only having the 5%. Uh, we have calculated the statistics. Since 1972, we do have a statistics. When we calculate the Turkish constructors project, the total of the Number is reaching to $355 billion distributed to 119 countries. So this turnover within 45 years have really showing out the fact that we have been qualified, we have become an expert, that 5% of a market share in Africa can be increased. So from the second place, we, we within a few, within seven or eight years, we may go up to the first place. China is the first, Turkey is the second, United States is the third. We are beyond uh, the United States because 
We do have a power. Our engineering team, our engineering team is very strong. Just our command, our military forces are ready to serve. When I was having my education in Michigan, my classmates are uh, the CEOs of many companies at Turner, at Vector, at Solidar, and similar. In Abu Dhabi, they are uh, being the CEOs of many good companies, and they're asking a project manager from me. They're asking for a very good engineer, Turkish engineer, from me. So the, what is the special feature of these Turkish people? The response is like that. They are very well educated. Turkish engineers are very well educated. Uh, we are above the OECD levels, and the Turkish engineers are hardworking and very honest. So uh, they are speaking for the general business world. It can be an architect, it can be a technician or an accountant. And they are sincere, and they are really serving very good. So they are being preferred, mostly, for, these, for their loyalty. We would like to make use of our own sources. But the demand, in order to express you the demand amount uh, for the Turkish people, labor force, there is such kind of a high level of demand. By 2040, in the next 22 years, in Africa, when we look at the demand amount, the infrastructure, including the railways, airports, and subways, and energy power plants, $6 trillion of a infrastructural budget is being estimated for the next 22 years. And this tr $6 trillion business volume should somehow be taken by Turkey. When we look at the sub-Saharan region, there are 48 countries, and total of the population is 800,000 people. In the sub-Saharan region, the energy production, which the Spain do have 45 million population, is equal to their production. 100,000 megawatt is the Spain's production. In Turkey, 86,000 megawatts, so there is a huge demand uh, for the establishment of the, for the construction of the energy plants. When we come to our local market, we do have a lot of development acts on the railways and the speed of trends. When we look at them, um, the subways and also the airport. He has just explained that every 100 kilometers we will be having an airport. There will be huge demand. But in order to play in the World League, what we are going to take as a turnover is very crucial because our local industry is eating its bread. When we have a construction business, we are bringing the labor force. Our labor force is moving to that land and they are earning their money in foreign lands. So the design companies, the service companies are earning. So the construction business do have such kind of a satisfactory side. And on the other side, uh, on the moral side, you are being satisfied because you are constructing a monument. When we come to the energy sector, it is 86 uh, thousand megawatts and look at the diagram in hydro 36 in natural gas 31 in coal 31 half of them is the linear half of them is the imported coal and the uh, solar power and also wind power is uh, having the rest of the amount nuclear power is a clean energy according to me when i look at the nuclear uh, facilities uh, 30 of them are being constructed and we do have more than 400 the nuclear power plants and 10.5 is the uh, global amount in Mersin Aku is being constructed 408,800 uh, we will be reaching to 9,500 megawatts so we are speaking such kind of a huge nuclear power amount and the established power will be in parallel with the world we will be having the equal percentage, so we will achieve the success. In Turkey, when we can establish power, we do have 1,620 of this amount, and we will continue to make new investments. We have started work in Karabiga with 1,320 
And in total, we do have 1,620%, which is the 1.9% of the total amount. 11 billion megawatts per hour is being produced. And when we look at the Turkish consumption, 292,000 is the amount that we have in hand. And in distribution, we have taken a long way. In distribution, the Turkish companies, energy distribution companies, are very good level. It is possible to give these services in Middle East, in South Africa, in Meram region. We do have the distribution. It is composed of six different cities, approximately 10% of the Turkish land, 10% of the uh, Turkish energy distribution is being done by us. We do have 200,000 subscribers and our engineers are showing have a high level of performance and from 9% of the seepage loss uh, leakage, infrastructure leakage index has been declined to 5 and when we look at region it is one of the Attraction zones, it was 20 million people, now it has been doubled. I believe that we, re we need to reach to 50 million very soon. Hillside, Hillside uh, is our touristic brand in Fethiye, a 1,000 meter square of a bay. Uh, we do have a 400 roomed resort. Nesotoprak Bay. I would like to congratulate them. It's four season. They do have a great construction in Bodrum. The own, I know the f owner of four seasons. Having such kind of a facility in that region is something to be honored. But inside, Harvard University do have a case study. Because the satisfaction of the tourists and the quality systems is being uh, done as if it's an engineering service. We do have tourism engineering applications. When we look at the GDP of Turkey, I truly believe that approximately the GDP of Turkey is uh, 857 billion dollars. When we look at G20 list, we are in the 16th place. However, with my sincere thinking, it will be a 5.5 growth rate. Sometimes it may be shifted to 4.5 or 5, but if we stabilize, if we make it sustainable, it will be 5.5. The global average is 3.3, 3.6. So from the 16th place, we will be going up to the 12th places, and in the middle scale, we will be reaching up to 10th place. Of course, this is so much about showing willingness. As the business world, we do have a willingness, wishing. So you need to show. First of all, you need to want, uh, wish it, desire it, and then you need to work for it. Thank you very much for listening to me. Mr. When we look at Thai group, in your philosophy, the knowledge is being transformed into experience. When we look at the projects that you carry on, or in the retailing business, are very clear. I would like to get your opinion. Textile. Textile is the field that I would like to speak about. It is a manufacturing field. And when we look at the industry, the industry in itself uh, has got 4.0, industry 4.0, which has got uh, a threshold, pass, uh, through a threshold with industry 4.0. And look at the textile industry. Not only the investor, your group is also a developer, an innovator. What are the things to be developed? What is the place of textile in the future of Turkey? Thank you very much, everyone. I heard very distinguished speakers, and it's very hard to speak in between them. That's beside Nihat Bey. He has explained that a great excitement. Our story will be just like an end 
is the next to an elephant for the very first time I have I'm attending an event and uh, such kind of a big event and thank you very much for inviting me textile industry is the first step of Turkey to become involved in the industrial area when we go back to 40 years ago from Denizli to Maraş uh, from Uşak to different parts of the Turkey they were having hand looms and they were doing weaving at their homes and after developing and industrializing they have taken a very long way and has become one of the biggest labels money in Turkey label is a very important label for example but under the changing conditions this has been reshaped and the industry has revitalized in the 1960s when we have started to export activities has got a huge difference with our present time. You are having quotas, they have terminated them, and with the free trade agreements, many countries have brought some opportunities and advantages to each other. And look at the general portrait of the business. Turkey is still having a textile as the third biggest industry. When we look at the labor force, it is one of the major industries. And look at the labor force, women labor force, it is far beyond any other industry. So we are, need to approach the textile industry with a different manner, just even for this reason. So of course, uh, it seems that a fa there is a fuss on manufacturing, uh, but we are doing the design ourselves, we are providing logistics by ourselves, and we are making use of all of the technologies. So we are providing all of the products and we are trying to promote those products. Otherwise, it is not possible to sell these products with the prices that we provide. Uh, uh, trousers, uh, the blouses, uh, jerseys, price is providing an opportunity for an Eastern company to come and buy it from us. Um, they are coming us uh, because we are selling them fashion, we are selling them innovative products. They are coming us because we are having a consensus, we are having a similar perspective. We do have a friendly relationship with them. Because of these reasons, our textile manufacturing is still continuing on. Being involved in the market is very important. And making use of the advantage is also very important. If a country, if an industry is being a leader, it is so much devoted to its sub-industries. And textile sub-industry is very strong. One day, when a designer would like to produce a product, up until the same night, it is possible to provide the raw material and may see it and place it on the shelf to be sold. So this is a huge opportunity and advantage. You cannot see it in any other country, neither in China nor in Italy. Such kind of an innovation power, such kind of a nearly producing capacity cannot be found anywhere else. For this reason, our textile export and textile industry will be sustainable for a long period of time. And many companies, many brands, have been turned into, transformed into brands and they are finding places in the big global markets. The most important feature of textile is the competitive power. The competitiveness in textile uh, is a global competitiveness. From the cheapest country to the, the most expensive country, there are uh, different competitions. On one side, design and development from Italy is coming. On the other side, in Bangladesh, but pricing, we do have competitiveness. When we look at the total picture, textile is something which we can never give up in Turkey. And long period of time, it will be sustainable. This is what I believe in. What we have done so far, approximately since 2010, in Egypt, for the very first time we have made our first investment. Why we have invested in Egypt? Because between Egypt and United States, there was a free trade agreement. After having the free trade agreement, the product which was going from us to the United States was having a customs 
taxation, uh, which is about 18%. So we have done our export activities and continued our export activities in free trade zone, which was Egypt at those times. Of course, there has been some uh, political conflicts, but now it is more stabilized. Since 2017, the $50 million of an export activity has taken place. This year in Turkey is above $100 million. And in textile business, five years, four years ago, we have made another investment in Algeria. It's a full integrated investment. Uh, for example, a raw material, uh, for example, cotton is coming and also being uh, mixed in a closed area uh, and 10,000 people are working. It's a huge complex and we are uh, giving out as an outcome the finished product. In the next 10 years, approximately 2.5 thousand square of an area will be the field of the facility, will be the area of the facility on the northern side of Africa. Algeria is very close to Europe. We will be having export activities. We will be having that opportunity. Logistics is becoming very important day by day because we need to be very close to the market. And from now on, and last year, we, may, we have taken a decision to make an investment in Serbia, and it is still continuing. In Serbia, we do have a strategic Russian door to be opened. And secondly, we would like to be more involved in the European market. When we consolidate all of these things, approximately 55, 60 million of uh, manufacturing power being owned by us, uh, by our group. So as a Turkish company, this is something honorable. Not only the brand, not only the shops or the labels, uh, which is making a brand brand, but the manufacturing line needs to be a brand. And in Egypt, we do have 2,500 people as a labor force. And annually, we will be reaching up to 80 or 100 thousand dollar of a turnover amount. Another story we have started in 2014, we have been uh, introduced in the field of retailing business. Four Seasons Hotel uh, has been bought from Yapu Credit Bank and we have started to make an investment for the Bosphorus Hotel and within a few years we have opened one of the biggest hotels of the world. Four season brand at Bosphorus, at Sultan Ahmed, well, it was present. It was an old uh, prison, and it has been transformed. It was an uh, old Sultan Ahmed prison, and now transformed into a hotel. So we do have more than, uh, it has got a lot of awards, global awards. It's a unique project. Every year it is being awarded. Even in the worst year, it has been awarded, and it's a very honorable hotel. Our Bosphorus Four Season Hotel is the same. It is a success story at the moment, in the past year. It has been awarded as the best city hotel. Many awards have been taken. And uh, at the third phase, with four seasons somehow, we will be, we have started a project in Bodrum. Most probably it will be one of the best resorts of the world. I claim that the best resort uh, of in Mediterranean region, in Aegean region, we would like to be the best and we will accomplish that. Location is very important and the operator is very important. Four season type of an operator is our partner and one of the best places, venues of the world, Bodrum, is with us and with this combination we will be successful. One of the important events that I would like to mention, it is not a matter of constructing the best facility, best construction, not operating it. But beyond that, our cities, our land needs to be a brand of their own. I mean, when you construct a hotel at the top of, at the top of a mountain, if you do not have a road to go up to that mountain, there is no way to bring the people up to the mountain. Bodrum is a very accessible place. All of the cities, all of the neighborhoods, all, all of the areas are accessible to the airport. It has got a lot of facilities for accessibility. And for the hotel business and for the tourism, they need, 
all of the sources needs to be mobilized. And when we look at the approximate number of the tourists and their staying is being three days. So 50 million, 60 million and 70 million tourists are coming. But if they stay one day more, it is bringing us 25% of productivity, internal productivity, which is a very important figure. If we duplicate it, approximately 60%, 70% may be achieved. This is also a very important thing to be mentioned. Before concluding my speech once again, I also would like to say that I trust Turkey, I believe in Turkey, because we are in a very important uh, geographic location and no country has the luxury to give up on Turkey. And we don't have any option but to work. As the citizens of a developing country, we have to work, otherwise we cannot be successful. No one actually succeeded without working. I was in China and when I uh, so China, uh, I was shocked because when I went to Japan, I was also impressed with their uh, standards and with their quality. We are inspired by them, but rather than having the inspiration, we should do it ourselves. And by making certain sacrifices, I believe we can be successful. Thank you. Özgür Bey, size dönmek istiyorum, Migros olarak. Mr. Özgür, let's continue with you. You are defining yourself as a modern retailer, but starting from 1954, Migros also has an important heritage for the retail sector, and Migros contributed a lot for the development of the retail sector. And Migros can actually continue with the inorganic and the organic growth. And this is uh, translating into the financial results of the company. Considering all of those aspects, what can you say about the future of your company, of Migros, and what do you think the retail sector means for Turkey? Thank you very much. First of all, I also would like to thank uh, for this nice organization. organization. I also would like to thank uh, Mr. Talet and Rauf, and I believe these sessions are also uh, motivating us a lot. After listening to such uh, uh, actually exciting uh, projects, our motivation is increasing, and hopefully we will be opening new uh, shops, and this is our uh, one of the biggest missions. I believe we have to upgrade our sectoral information. We have spoken uh, very big and very huge projects. Maybe uh, the retail sector is not represented at the desired level, and this is our mistake, and the retail sector is not as popular as the other sectors. But when we take a closer look to the internal operations of the retail sector, I can say that the retail sector is at the second place. If we say that the industrial sector is at the first place in terms of the contributions to the GDP, uh, retail sector ranks at the second place. In terms of the employment after industry and agriculture, retail sector ranks at the third place. Of course, in terms of the basic uh, projects, maybe it doesn't have such a huge volume, but the retail sector is reaching out to the consumers. So when we create an innovation, we are directly touching to the daily lives of the people, and we have to be aware of that, and we have to embrace our business and our profession. Ms. Begum uh, Han also said that the contribution of the woman to this uh, sector uh, can actually translate into a further 20 at 25 percent of growth. And retail sector is also very important for the employment of the young woman. Let me give you an example from my own company. We are a company of 65 years old. We have 45,000 uh, employees, and 40% of them are women, and they are working uh, any kind of position. And 40% of our managers are again women. So for the overall development uh, of the Turkish economy, I believe each sector has a special mission and the retail sector has its mission as well. 
and we are also observing such uh, growth rates in different branches of our sector as well. We have very joyful activities. I uh, told you that we started with the uh, truck lorries, from truck lorries to the shops, from shops to the barcode system, and from barcoding systems to the supermarkets, from supermarkets to the online shopping, from online shopping to the mobile. Uh, shopping so this sector is upgrading itself all the time and the, this sector is directly correlated with the uh, I mean uh, c very close to the consumers I can actually tell a lot of funny stories I'm not sure whether you have encountered with it or not one of our customers on the social media made a very important recommendation and one of the customers said that I uh, would like to represent you in one of our shops and he said that I will always be uh, shopping from your uh, company and our social media representative said that uh, just uh, shoot a video and then we will actually uh, give you a free uh, shopping experience I mean, uh, when a customer actually made a recommendation, then you have to respond to them maybe the next day. So it is actually uh, realized instantly. And I also do believe that for this sector to reach out to its targets, the, uh, we also still have certain uh, bottlenecks uh, and gaps. And since the uh, under secretary is here, I also would like to say that the uh, retail sector needs it. Maybe when you are buying the potatoes and onions, you are not feeling it. But in terms of finding finding the uh, f financing tools and also for growth, SMEs are in need of uh, huge supports. When we set our foot to our journey, we always believe that uh, the potential of Turkey was great. For 65 years, we have been involved in the retail sector and the number of the uh, magazines and the shops in uh, Turkey uh, reached over uh, 20,000 and we are speaking about 25,000 uh, point uh, for sales. And uh, the retail sector right now has the uh, ratio of 33%. And uh, not only Migros, of course, is contributing to that ratio. And we are feeling the potential of this sector uh, in our daily lives. Uh, and there are also those retail uh, point of sales with the number of 100 uh, to 120,000 uh, points, which are not uh, uh, organized. As a result, daily problems and the instant problems of the logistic companies uh, can easily be felt by our sector. Of course, this structure brings huge responsibility uh, to our company. Of course, we have to fight even further in this sector. And this fight will be even harsher and harsher in the future. We, are speak we were speaking about agricultural uh, society, industrial society, and most probably in the future we will be speaking about the information societies. I do believe that the industrial sector should be the most important sector in Turkey, but today manufacturing and production is not actually uh, is not actually something as a unique talent. If you, you have to sell, and selling is actually the issue, and you have to have the right skill set. And both the producers and both the consumers should actually feel the same heartbeats. If they cannot uh, use the same language, then this retail sector cannot survive. Most probably you have such experiences. One of uh, my son was asking for a calligraphy pen and this uh, calligraphy pen was brought to us within one week with the one dollar of transfer uh, cost. I mean, if my son is asking for a calligraphy pen from China, as, uh, since I'm a retailer, I have to think twice. And I told you that this competition will be even harsher and harsher in the future. And most probably we are trying to undertake this uh, burden. 
Although the technological infrastructure of Turkey seems quite good, but unfortunately the uh, telecommunication infrastructure of Turkey is not at the desired level, and the logistics infrastructure is not good at all. And in terms of the international competition, we are in a disadvantageous position. As Migros, both in local market and also in the international markets, we are fighting a lot in order to contribute to our national eco economy. This morning, uh, the Deputy Prime Minister mentioned himself, 35% or 40% of the tomato that we ha have harvested is going to the garbage So uh, before even we are actually bringing them to our table. We have lots of problems in terms of the meat production and the meat production, and they are the basic uh, foods, actually. So we have to invest in our logistics infrastructure and agricultural infrastructure. Of course, the mission of the uh, retail sector is really important, but the production side should also undertake the same responsibility. And we are doing our best in order to fulfill our responsibilities all the time. But the technology will bring about many opportunities because those kinds of investments, if they cannot create efficiency, then such kind of differentiations and insufficiencies cannot be eradicated. One of the most frequently spoken topics was blockchain. In different sectors, there have been many initiatives in the blockchain, and retail sector uh, actually will be a very good example because blockchain will be much more successful, especially in the uh, disseminated uh, markets. A farmer, for example, without a need for any intermediary, will be able to sell its product directly to the micros with the uh, blockchain and their contracts will be undersigned on the online platform. And this will be a huge technological development and we have to be active in that regard. But unfortunately, uh, we don't have the right players, right number of the players who will be brainstorming about the development of the retail sector, and this number should be increasing. And in all of our visits, we are trying to uh, speak out uh, for this, but all of those problems are the problems that we have to fight individually and that we have to be aware of. I don't think that there is a need to speak about e-commerce, because e-commerce is actually a sector reality. Let me give you a basic example. Uh, everybody is trying to speak with the international statistics and the figures. Uh, the food uh, in the e-commerce is the, actually the lowest uh, part of uh, this online uh, shopping. But there are certain, uh, for example, uh, shops of us, 30 and 35 percent of their sales are being conducted through online and e-commerce. And electro uh, electronic trade is actually a logistic play and you have to increase your logistics and you have to increase your efficiencies in the last kilometer of this journey and I do believe personally e-commerce and the traditional commerce they should be integrated and this will be the right the most rightest model and we have seen its indicators in the last years because the electronic platforms are also trying to buy those traditional commerce platform. We should never forget and we should uh, simultaneously feel that we shouldn't be interpreting digitalization as a tool only for e-commerce. Our physical shops are also undergoing a very serious digital transformation. Maybe a very different transformation will be taking place within five years, which will be totally different from 65 years. Right now, without using any uh, cashiers, uh, for example, any uh, people uh, who are actually working on the uh, cashiers, uh, we can actually work. And this also bring about uh, different business models and everybody is asking whether uh, actually uh, a system without a cashier will be a threat to the employment. 
but software uh, in terms of the uh, smart uh, cashiers and cash collectors new actually uh, employment fields are popping up so the technology will uh, actually avoid us to uh, work in repetitive works and uh, e-commerce uh, in that regard will be highly important. I also would like to say that mobile payments were tried to be realized inside of uh, the shops and we have completed its infrastructure but uh, of course online you can pay your uh, you can make your payments on mobile but inside of the shop you will be able to use your mobile phone in order to make your payments. I mean, we have such a high amount of data of our customers and being an information society actually means that. And retailer can actually say what the producers should produce. And such kind of information sharing will be done very easily. Today, as the, uh, actually the person at the highest level of Migros, I can say that such systems will be accessible to all of our suppliers. Daily stocks, daily sales, each kind of sales performance can be followed by uh, our suppliers through their mobile phones. Since we established this bridge of technology, Not only the uh, local competition, but in terms of the international competition, we will differentiate ourselves. This is, at, in summary, what I would like to say, but if you want to remember only one sentence, I can say that we should do very simply the automation of our retail so that in the global competition, they will actually feel that nothing is awkward and I believe this will be the most important topic for the retail sector and uh, with collaboration of the retailers uh, I uh, am ready because as a single retailer I cannot do this all retailers and all producers should come together and collaborate and when we can do this then uh, this uh, information society will be a reality. Maybe Turkey was always trying to become an industrial society, but uh, still we have lots of opportunities to become an information society. We have completed the first round, but in the first round your uh, messages and your projects were uh, very uh, exciting. We actually came to an end of our original time, but I also would like to ask for 15 uh, minutes more. Uh, so I want you to actually uh, speak about your uh, last words. So every person will have two or three minutes. So I would like to start with the Under Secretary. What would you like to say for the future of Turkey? Of course, we have listened and we have observed the excitement uh, of our leader companies from different sector. I don't want to go into the details, but I will, will be demanding from the real sector, private sector and the finance sector, please push us. Please push the public sector. Make demands and please follow whether your demands are satisfied or not. As the Under Secretary of the Turkish Treasury, I will be dealing with any sort of your demands which will expand your sector. And I also would like to say that we will support you. Whenever there is a bottleneck, then you can actually call me to solve your problems. Thank you very much. Your message was actually giving us a lot of courage rather than a vision. Mr. Özgür, what would you like to say uh, for this sector and also what would you like to say to us as a takeaway uh, message? What I can add can be as follows. We have many manufacturers and we have spoken with us uh, during this day. In the previous panel, Muharrem uh, said that I am selling milk and yogurt and uh, they are actually selling uh, high quality milk but 
our citizens are also trying to produce milk and yogurt inside of their houses. So we have to be uh, careful about this dilemma. And the retailers are trying to take the part of one side. So we have to share the transparent and the secure information with our customers. We don't need anything else. And this is the expectation of the current generation. And we have to improve ourselves in terms of the transparency. So I once again would like to say to all of our manufacturers, I would like to make a call to them. We, I guarantee to open our infrastructure to them to be used. They can use our platforms and they have to share the content of their products so that the transparency can be established. And this transparency will actually improve the competition and in terms of the international competition, the expectations for the freshness uh, and the natural naturality of the products will be increasing. Ms. Begumhan, what would you like to say? What will you give to us as a takeaway uh, message? Actually, we have always speak, spoke about economy. So this week is the World Happiness Week. United Nations, do you have an index? Unfortunately, Turkey is on the 74th place. We have spoken about different dreams, about companies, about Turkey. My dream is including the whole uh, companies. I am wishing for a happier Turkey. Our Deputy Prime Minister mentioned that. 1% of the world population has got the income, has got the 99% of the income. So it is not a short-term profit. Long-term profit by keeping the needs of the community in mind and the values should be the center of the decision-taking mechanism. And I give importance to serve for the community, for the others and hope that we will not be losing our main values. We will be placing them in our center and wishing such kind of a Turkey, and I invite you all for a happier Turkey. So in summary, Begimanum mm -hmm. opened a very good tour. How do you want to conclude? Especially the Western businessmen are expressing the picture of Turkey as follows. It is very hard to have four wavelengths in the same picture, but you do have a four wavelength in the same picture. This is something that we really admire, they say. Turkey do have such kind of a feature because of its history, because of this holy land, because of our moral values. This four wavelengths are matching with each other. The physical wavelength physical frequency. So this is our touching way. Somehow being senses, sensing your shoulder, so better language can be included within that. So our physical frequency is very effective. Our logical frequency is also very effective. When we chat together, when we have face-to-face -face meeting from brain to brain, we do have a logical frequency. And the third one is the emotional frequency. So this is so much related with our emotions and compiling with the first two ones. So from heart to heart, speaking from heart to heart, when we are doing a chat, our, our hearts are communicating. The fourth one is the hardest one. The number of the communities which is having in harmony with the fourth value is the spiritual frequency. That spiritual frequency is very strong in Turkey and this is making the business world in Turkey very strong. As we have mentioned in the previous paragraphs, the perception of Turkish people being flexible and adapting in hard conditions and additional those features, when we add these frequency levels, it is adding a huge value. Our biggest value is, when I was having a chat with my passed away father, he was telling me that we were chatting about the banks, the World Bank, IFC, uh, EYR, and many other banks. I was having more hairs on my hat. I was younger. In the last five minutes uh, of our chat, father said that 
refresh your tea. Let me tell you the best bank. I was waiting for the World Bank. No, Bank of Favors, which is İlikler Bankası in Turkish. The account in here is very important. It is not basing on interest. It is just uh, for the good things that you do for people. And in the Bank of Favors, if you do have a very strong account, generally Turkish uh, businessman's account is very strong, this account really worth uh, mil billions and millions of dollars. It is beyond those billions and millions of dollars. All of the people in this hall are masters. Do you have such kind of uh, account in the Bank of Favors? In the seminars in the United States, in the seminars in Europe, we are all ambassadors. Uh, we do have a huge tent and we are all ambassadors and they are youngest ambassador Kerem Sabancı is sitting in the front he is the feature of Turkey he's a very handsome young boy sitting in the front this ambassadorship as an ambassador I am visiting John Hopkins Michigan Canada about the construction management I am attending some sessions and we are carrying the Turkish flag. We have gone to a seminar with you, Jamal Bey, to Columbia University, and Begum Hanan has attended very distinguished seminars. So I'm very glad that all of the speakers, panel speakers, do really give a great value. And investing relations are very important. We are being appreciated a lot. They were telling that we don't have such kind of a Minister of Finance. My Mr. Czech has been awarded as the best. Temel uh, Kotilbe. We have attended two Deutsche and IFC conference with him and he is a very distinguished and appreciated person. He was at the head of Turkish Airlines at those times. We have talked about tourism. Turkish Airlines do have a huge added value in the field of tourism. We need to place their, their right on the table. I know them. They do have a lot of uh, contribution and uh, they have shown a great attempt to develop the airline business. And also for our treasury, I would like to congratulate our undersecretary. According to Maastricht's criteria, the public deficit should be having a limit. All of the Spanish Portuguese are above the 60% and going up to the 100s. And Turkey is just like a world champion. Uh, they have gone to 28% last six and seven years. It has come from 44 to 28. If you get shocked, Turkey uh, is a very successful ratio. We really would like to congratulate our treasury for their success. My father do have a five-ball anecdote. I would like to conclude with those words. But before closing, concluding, we are speaking about the future of Turkey. Kerem, would you please stand up? I want everyone to see me, see you, because you are the youngest. Did you have an association? A big applause for this young generation. Did you have an association? It's a new leader association. Kerem established a, his association in, in the high school, and they have I have attended some of their panels on abroad, and they are really presenting Turkey very good, very efficiently. And they have totally changed the perception. Talat Bey, Rolf Bey, most probably we need to interchange our places with the young generation. Let us drink our tea and let them speak on the floor more. Okay, what is that five ball anecdote of my father? It was a Sunday morning. And I was a little bit stressed. A lot of things came one in and after. Sometimes the social life, sometimes the friends, sometimes the business life is squeezing you in the corner. I asked my father, how are you balancing this life? He said, it's very easy. Just draw a triangle with a chalk on the floor and you stand on that, it's a five ball jungling. You're a juggler. 
Well, this is just an experience and we're coming to the world in order to experience this. One of them is the turnover. One ball is the turnover. And that uh, plastic ball may fall down. It is not the end of the world. You may have a lower uh, income. The second ball is the profit. You can have a loss per year. So you may have a little profit or you may have a lot of profit. Do not become happy when you earn a lot of money. If you lose money, do not be sorry for that. Lots of money are the paid, uh, I mean paid uh, bills for the experiences. We have passed to the second ball. Uh, the third ball is an iron ball. Be careful, be a little bit careful about that. That is your cash. The cash flow. You know those calculations, but be cautious about that. Whenever it falls, someone else may hold it. That can be a financial bank and may bring it back to you. Or there can be a problem. Be careful about that. And the other two balls. The other ball, the other fourth ball is the glass ball. How we're going to handle them. If it is broken, it will be going away. You can put it in your pocket. One of them is the family, the other one is your friends. Please try not to break them. It is very hard to play with five of them. No, there is one triangle that you need to keep inside. You cannot go up. One side of the triangle is our mind. The second part of the triangle is our time. The third one is our money. Thank you very much for listening to me. Moderating after ZP was not very easy. I'm going to start from my undersecretary. Where are you going to bring this speech, this conclusion? I won't be telling another thing. When I was speaking, I have not mentioned anything on behalf of technology. One, about approximately, with a glass of water, we are washing a trouser. So. This is the investment and importance that we give for technology. Thank you. Nihat Bey, the finishing floor is yours. Which message you would like to leave? What do you want us to remember? I am starting my speech. Zeyr Bey. Izzet's father was a very distinguished person for us. He has led us very efficiently and I pray after him. It is very hard to find such kind of people anymore. Hope that one day we may become as like him. My last word is energy. I will be summarizing it. I don't want to take any more time. Energy is one of the most important topics of Turkey. Last year and this year, it is as if we do have surplus energy. 86,000 megawatts is the point that we have reached. But the investors of energy, because of the situation, they do not want to continue to invest, but we should not stop. If Turkey is growing up for four times more, then the energy is adding 1.5%, and that's so 6% of the growth is probable. If we do not continue to invest, invest, we may have an energy deficiency. The world is giving up to use fossil energy, natural gas, coal type of energy sources are not being used anymore. New energy and production systems are based on renewable energy systems, hydraulic, solar, wind, geothermal, and also the waste, recycled wastes. And Turkey needs to give a great importance to that. Actually, our Ministry of Energy has started an era of national energy, included the national coal, but moreover than that, the renewable, renewable oil in energy needs to be taken into account. We do have a new law. 
27,000 of hydraulic energy has been produced. This is a record, global record. We have started new in solar because the solar systems costs are decreasing day by day very rapidly. All around the world, solar energy investments are going on from Africa to China and to, until of course, wind power is coming after the solar energy. We need to give importance to that. And those investors need to be satisfied. Unsatisfied investments will be escaping from our country and they will be seeking for alternative investment fields. So in the near future, within three or four years in Turkey, we may have the problem of energy deficiency Despite the fact that you construct nuclear power stations, you will not be getting over the need. It was a very enjoyable panel. On behalf of our panel speakers and on behalf of myself, I would like to thank you for your interest and for listening to us. We have closed our panel session with energy, but all of the opinions and approaches were very energetic. Uh, so I would like to thank them. Thank you. We would like to thank all of our panelists and all of our participants. Distinguished participants, by the way, you can actually evaluate the sessions from the application. You can choose the relevant session and give points to the session. We will continue with the upcoming session.